to go into number one thing we're going to go into we're obviously going to talk about um the trash tuesdays update so since the last time we checked in brendan shaw went on the tiger belly to kind of say his piece i guess directly to the guys or to apologize i don't really sure why did i say apologize to apologize um it obviously didn't come across that well because it ended up being a very contentious interview kalila held it down she grilled brendan um held him to account recounted some details that he was obviously trying to skirt he did he really didn't say sorry still he kind of said um he kind of said my bad but he never really said sorry which is weird considering the platform that they're on considering what's happened and where they're at now in their relationship you just would have thought a uh, sorry i really messed up i know it was only seven years ago i know it was seven years ago and i apologize then but i just want to apologize now he didn't really say that phrase he just said something like my bad and then of course the whole thing about evidence came up about him having 300 pages that proved that bobby lee's behind the fire and the kids subreddit a concentrated effort to kind of you know target him and discredit him and make him look bad on the internet which is absolutely insane to think one comedian is responsible for that forget the whole stuff about bobby lee not being computer literate just to think one person is responsible for it is absolutely nuts because what that tells me is that most likely this person brendan doesn't actually think it's doesn't actually think um yeah he doesn't believe that there are sixty thousand plus people close to 70 now who generally don't like what he does just because of the way he plans himself on on camera and on social media he can't believe it. So he has to work, he has to come up with this cuckoo idea that somehow there's this mastermind behind the scenes plotting to take him down because what? Is he really a big scalp? If you wanted to do all that, you would just do it to someone like a Joe Rogan, innit? That's a scalp to actually take because he's actually a big deal. But Brenda's not that famous to, to be doing coding in the background, to put together a subreddit and, you know, make all these different sock accounts. Like it's, just, it's just preposterous. Anyway, so since then that happened, at the end of the show, Brendan was meant to give Kalila some evidence and showed show the evidence to her. We're not sure what happened there. So this is Trash Tuesdays where we're going to get an update regarding it and whether or not the evidence actually was given to Kalila and what she thought of it and, you know, the general impressions of Esther and Annie concerning uh, Brendan Shaw's weird apology tour that really wasn't an apology tour. So this is the episode here. It's College Girls and BS Season um finale episode 65 of trash tuesdays with s with annie esther and kalila if you want to check it and watch it for yourself with no interruptions feel free to do so as i'm doing the live stream i'm going to be pausing and interjecting and saying my piece here and there if you don't like it i understand but please understand it is a live stream if you're watching this on replay next time around whenever i end up clipping this up it's a live stream please don't shout at me don't get on me on the comments and say you should stop it stop talking stop talking Mate, I'm playing a video on live stream and I'm going to comment on it. Please, please stop attacking me. You're really hurting my feelings, right? As, no, I need to do a Brennan. What did Brennan do? Um, is that nice? That's not nice, right? That's not nice. <laughs> anyway, let's jump on in. What's what's the time stamp? Yeah, let's talk about this. There we go. Here it is. Uh, no, it's this one, right? No, it's this, yeah. 27. So let's go from here, from the timestamps, and let's kind of continue and see what the ladies have to say about everything. Wait, I know we're going all over the place, but I'm dying to ask you something. Um, you had Shab on Tiger Belly yesterday. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell me? Wow, what? that's the first time we've heard his name on this podcast ever. It's ever been is. brought up. Wow. But can you um, tell us what happened? I want to be like super like kind about this whole thing because I think it does it did take a lot for him to sit in front of us. Um, I I got to tell you probably one of the most boring episodes we've ever done. Um, only because it's like there was hardly any laughs. It was so tense. It was very uncomfortable, and um, I didn't. I wish that I, I was going in there thinking that he would just like take responsibility for everything but there was one piece of information that i felt like i still <laughs> take responsibility for things are you new to brendan shub kalila are you new <laughs> it's like that meme with james franco with the noose around his neck first time huh <laughs> she she actually thought he was gonna come in there and fess up for me personally i knew this was always gonna go downhill from the moment he got on um what's his show show called the Shorb Show, when he refused to acknowledge it 
or to even kind of talk about it in a serious way and to really just apologize and kind of nip it in the bud, I knew it was going to go down the drain. I knew it was going to go only, the only way it was going to go was down. Because if I remember correctly, that short show they did was just before he decided to go on tour and do all those podcasts to promote his special. And I couldn't work out in my brain. I was like, bro, you're releasing a special on YouTube, which is already a bit of an L for you, but still you're trying to kind of rebrand yourself by putting more material of yourself out there because he was very hesitant to do it before because I guess he went, he didn't want to get trolled. So he's trying to put more material of himself out there. Whether or not the special is good or not is whatever, but just you're, you want to market the special and do it in the best possible light. Why would you want all of this nonsense to be around you whilst you're promoting your special? Why would you want these questions to come up when you're into when you get an interview? It doesn't like look how awkward it was when he went on Flagrant Two with Andrew Schultz and Andrew kind of grilled him about the whole Annie Liedem and Trugwell thing. I knew from then I was like, this guy didn't just apologize. I would have just even if you're a narcissist, right? Just apologize, just so you can not talk about it again. So you don't have to. So you can just move on. But he's so I don't know wrapped up in his own self that he didn't want to do, or maybe he just doesn't believe he did it. I don't know, but yeah, it's hilarious that Clyde thought he was going to admit something. That's hilarious have a big like mistrust for him so we have a long way to go really even after you had him on yeah and we talked about it on the show i think like you know i don't have any ill feeling towards him anymore but there's still a lot of mistrust and only because you know i he's still not sorry to, to interrupt again but imagine fucking up the way he did right so you do a little faux pas not really a little faux pas a pretty big big faux pas let's not skirt around it right you're friends with somebody your friends, they're championing you and kind of bigging you up and saying how amazing you are, even though most people don't like you because of whatever reason they don't like you, valid or not invalid. You know this person's with somebody who happens to be your friend. You jump in their DMs to try and get at them. That's your friend. That's a really scummy thing to do. It's not like a, it's not like one day he, I don't know, he borrowed some money. It's, it's not even like, not even borrowed money. It's not like he he borrowed something and didn't give it back or something. This is like, real disrespect the kind of things where most people will just be like you know i'm gonna cut you off but then somehow it gets turned into like oh i'm a victim because i'm getting bullied online it's a very weird place to be i, I just don't want to skirt away from that kind of issue it's very strange that they've created this whole another narrative but maybe again maybe it's an la thing you know you try and make things trivial so that you don't get held accountable so that you can move on and everything will be okay. I don't really understand it. It's very odd because most people in normal life, so again, you know, everything has to be a fight, but most people just wouldn't talk to you again if you did something like that. Like, you'd just be excommunicated. But this has turned into, like, a sympathy tour. Bizarre. Willing to admit that um, what we said on the show ultimately led to the whole spectacle that became the Reddit accusation. He's saying those are two different occurrences. But I'm like, Shab, the timing is very strange because it was only a couple days after our live show that the the the, the Reddit. Sorry, sorry, Esther's face, it Esther's face. Different occurrences. But I'm like, <laughs> oh, you got it went too quickly. But anyway, you saw Shab, the timing is very strange because it was only a couple days after our live show that. The, the the reddit accusations came out and the slandering came out so we're not there yet i think that we have a long way to go before like we fully like have some type of uh i don't know like goodness between us but i do respect that you know goodness i said already before on the other podcast goodness the only goodness there is that brendan Proust probably still wants to fuck <laughs> i'm telling you this categorically <laughs> that guy still wants to fuck after everything has gone down, he probably still looks at her like yummy. Like, imagine, man. And this is the thing, too, to think about. Imagine if this was anyone else who wasn't within the Joe Rogan extended universe. Imagine if it was just, it was just some random person who's not pally pally with those guys had did this. What would have happened? I appreciate that he had the balls to come on the show. Okay, but can you tell me then, like, what did come out of it like what did he own up to or? i wish he had the balls to come on this show because I, I still it, after hearing um him talk to everyone except me about it i realized i did misinterpret it <laughs> and i when he, i watched the did you watch the fighter and the kid honestly Andy Liederman's an absolute boss i love how she's i love how she's purposely missing purposely mispronouncing words as a kind of you know as a kind of captive 
<laughs> to Brendan. It's absolutely hilarious. But she's absolutely keeping the same energy. I'm loving to see it. And you can generally tell, genuinely, sorry, tell the disdain that she has for Brendan. It's kind of seeping through her veins. You know what I mean? It's, it's pouring out of her flipping face. The, the disdain that she has for that guy. She does not like him in the slightest. Which is hilarious too, because I said it before in the other podcast, I said before, right? I don't understand how this even struggle thing happened. Because from Annie's reaction, she clearly like was thrown off by it. There was no like suggestion that they were even flirting or there was some kind of, you know, innuendos happening and whatnot and just some banter. No, it was, it, 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 for her, for I don't know, maybe it's just my experience. From my experience, usually when you're trying to, you know, solicit sexual favors from somebody. Usually it's somebody that you have some sort of interest in and it would help if they have some interest in you. So you can have the courage to ask because you, you know, you're in, you're hoping deep down that maybe they're going to say yes. You don't just go up to strangers. Like, not sure. You don't just go up to people that you just know as friends just and just say, hey, <laughs> would you like to <laughs> slobber my knob in my car down there? in view of everyone would you like to do that you don't usually do that you usually kind of you know got somebody that you know maybe is going to be interested back but the way Annie kind of responded or the way she recounted the story was like pure hate like how dare you ask me for a drug walk do you know who I am I don't even think you're funny you're awful I mean it was real like get away from me kind of energy so I wonder what even gave Brendan the, the thinking in his head that he could that it could even be a possibility. Maybe he was just mesmerized by her in general, but it's just, it just seems like she was not responding at all. Like she just, you know what I mean? She, 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 she wasn't feeling him in the slightest, but he felt that she was. Maybe that was the case. I don't really know. But I just like how she's keeping the same energy. I did not. I don't want well, to. Well, I, you know, I didn't realize he was being so bullied that he was afraid <laughs> for his life is what he was saying. And I guess when he asked me to walk to the truck, he wasn't wanting to do sexual favors. I'm so embarrassed by that, but he needed like an escort because he was scared that the haters were going to come for him. <laughs> Yo, I swear, Annie's fucking hilarious. I can't laugh too loud because, you know, it's really late at night here, so <laughs> whatever, but honestly, Annie's fucking hilarious. One of the most funniest things to come out of that whole entire Tiger Belly interview, right, with Brendan, was obviously the defined bullying line. That's going to that's gonna live way long. That's going to live long in, like, the folklore of, you know, LA podcasting community stuff that we do, whatever this whole thing is. That's going to be something that's going to be in the Hall of Fame of phrases. The other thing also was him saying that, what's that phrase he said? What did he say exactly? Um, I'm No, he said, I'm scared. And then I think Clyde was like, what? You're scared? And then he was like, no, 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 I don't feel good. He kind of backtracked. But first he tried to be like, I'm scared. You're scared, sir. You're a former UFC heavyweight, a top 15 one. You knocked out Mirko Krokop. What are you talking about? You're scared. <laughs> you're scared of Bobby Lee and Kalila no you're not you're just flipping embarrassed that you got exposed in 4k it happens cool it's a bit embarrassing but just apologize and move on he couldn't do it so he had to kind of spring up this routine about being a victim I just want to know who told him to do that because I'm for sure there was a plan I don't understand what that plan was with his team that they sat down and thought okay cool to combat this let's go with the victim thing like such a weird decision to make I don't really understand why you would decide to go for the the flipping um the victim thing if in my head the only two options i think exist for brendan in that situation would be either you double down and you just lean into so what you know what i mean I, I wanted your girl i've slid in the dms it is what it is what are you gonna do about it? i'll knock you out and then lead them and you're ugly anyway fuck you, you know what i mean you just you just flip in double down and lean into the douchebag thing right <laughs> you're ugly anyway i didn't want you right or number two, you just apologize profusely, like profusely apologize. Like that was wrong of me. I was drunk. You start blaming your family trauma. You know what I mean, you start really apologizing and digging deep into the sympathy well, but you don't go for victim, victim. You're six foot three. What is he? Six foot three, six foot five, 250 pounds. You're afraid of flipping. Um, What's his face? Bobby Lee and Kalila. Come on, my G. Come on. Um, anyway, we've got Super Chat here. Big up Super Chat from Dennis Michaels, who says, compared to Rogan and other boys, Eddie Brother assumes that the most reasonable and least offensive, I'll take flat earth over rape and bullying any day. 
<laughs> Mate, honestly, Dennis Michaels, you are 100% right. And I'm actually got to say this out loud because I don't think I've said it before here. I truly, truly miss Eddie Bravo. There were moments when on, on the Fight Companion where I'd get really angry and I'd scream at the flipping at my phone when Eddie Bravo had gone in one of his flipping um conspiracy theory rants. But I would give, like, I would pay hard money to see flipping Eddie Bravo back on Joe Rogan, just ranting and raving about conspiracies again, so we don't have to hear about COVID, we don't have to hear about some weird right-wing thing that Rogan's obsessed with, just to hear about fun, you know, nonsense conspiracy theories and flipping, you know, balls deep jujitsu talk. I would love to hear that now. Eddie Bravo is really missed, man. He really is missed. But I understand him too, because according to Joey Diaz, he ducked out from the scene when all that stuff with Chris Lee and Brian Callum was happening. Oh no, he ducked out when... First, it was Joe Diaz that kind of got cancelled. Do you remember when someone leaked that clip of, or somebody clipped up um, Joe Diaz saying crazy stuff in the beginning of JRE? And then I think that's what happened. And then Chris followed, and of course, Brian. And the, so according to Joe Diaz, um, Eddie Bravo ducked out of the scene because he didn't want to be the next person. And obviously, he's like a real human, he's got actual responsibility he's not like an entertainer you know i mean he has actually got flipping a business with that template new jujitsu he's got a family to look after and you couldn't risk getting cancelled and not having the ability to put food on the table for his family and shit so he decided to just you know back on into the bushes but i've seen him here and there pop up but he's not been on the main circuit with joe rogan and that or maybe joe rogan should try to distance himself from him anyway i don't really know but um but big up dennis michaels man <laughs> flat earth of a rape yeah i agree and I actually, guys, I actually made a petition to not be mean on the internet anymore. <laughs> that says petition to no be mean. To no be mean. You spelled think, not wrong. <laughs> I think we should no be mean on the internet. I have stickers. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No be mean. You spelled think, not wrong. <laughs> I think we should no be mean on the internet. I have stickers. There's different colors you can use. No more mean on the internet, especially to these good guys, because they are just trying to fight for freedom of speech. And so if you say mean things about them, I'm going to make sure this gets to Elon Musk and we're going to stop this right now. Oh my God, she is doing it brilliantly. I love how Kalila's like, oh no, because Kalila's tried to move on. She's obviously a, a, a mature lady. Like, look, you know, he embarrassed himself. It is what it is. The reception has been horrible to it. She doesn't want to pile on, but Annie is coming with the smoke. <laughs> so if anybody wants to sign it, I've got different colored crayons and stickers you can choose from your favorite I'm colors. so... Sorry, but I have to. How she's been pronouncing everything is hilarious. Her favorite call. <laughs> <laughs> that speech impediment thing is hilarious man i played already a video from you already on this show of brendan from yesteryears in the ufc and stuff and and then uh, i think a little bit after when he just finished the ufc and he was obviously doing the podcasting thing his voice or his speech impediment hasn't always been that bad i personally just think he's lazy the same way he doesn't necessarily I don't think sits down and slaves over his jokes and thinks of premises and bits that are funny and interesting or he watches old comedy specials. I think that kind of person who lacks research, who forget all that comedy stuff, the person who doesn't flip in, you know, analyze fight cards and actually watch tape on fighters before he does his short show stuff and just reads off of Wikipedia. I think that person is just lazy. So it wouldn't surprise me if he just purposely can't be bothered to pronounce words like they just come, they just, you know, he he just kind of bothered to move his mouth or his tongue in a way to pronounce the words properly. He just fuck it. I'm just gonna say how it is. I'm rich. It doesn't matter. I'll say what how I want. That's that's what I think it is. I don't think it's a speech impediment personally. I don't think it is. I don't I don't believe it. I asked, so I'm just curious. So they they're scared? Yes, it was because they were bullied that they were able to bully others. Oh because they you know were being what? bullied. Um, and I that... misinterpreted it and I am <laughs> Do I put legs? Listen, on I know it's gonna take a while, but I hope you do forgive me, <laughs> and I hope we can move on. I have lit. Not the irony of Annie apologizing to Brendan <laughs> first is hilarious, isn't it? He he won't even admit that it actually happened. Which again, can I be honest and can I be fair to him and say I get why he's not admitting it? I have a feeling personally. I have a feeling that this whole. Annie Liederman's story is probably way worse for him relationship wise than what happened with Kalila. Don't want to get too much in their personal stuff, but from what I know, from what I can see, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I think so. I think it's more I think it's more serious than that. Really do. I think maybe his wife told him, hey, if that story's true, you're done. Do you know what I mean? I, I think that's happening. So I think maybe it's it's in his best interest to deny it until the cows come home.
deny, 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 because effectively if he admits or it comes out that it's true, it could potentially end this guy's marriage. You know what I mean? That's not, I mean, no one wants to see that. I don't want to see that. I'm sure some of you guys even here who don't like him don't want to see that either. That's not, I mean, that's not cool. That's not cute. So it's understandable why he's denying it the way he is. But I think if he carries on, she's just going to keep carrying on too, I think, because she just doesn't like the guy. Nothing for love but you. And yes, so I misinterpreted. It's very embarrassing. For oh my this God. is what I'll say. Is um, that not the color you want? You, no, there's I many want a colors different color. From. I just want to I say did that. ask him. I said, Brendan, I was like, you got to come on our show. Like, you've got to, I think you've got to talk to Annie. And he, this is what he said. He's like, Kyla, just please not this week. <laughs> I didn't know they were victims of this this mean bullying online and it was affecting them so much. And I'm I, so sorry to contribute to that. I, and that's why this petition will be sent to Elon Musk. I am so sorry that this I, happened to them. That they were so scared I'm that so they had sorry. to commit a fire. I know crime. comedy's hard. You Should just then you just signed with a heart. Yeah, I'm just sending love. Pete, to did you want to sign criminals? the petition? I think sure. you should pass this on to the crew. <laughs> This is hilarious, no man. more bullying hilarious. behind the scenes, you guys. Do you hear me? <laughs> Kalila, no more bullying behind the scenes. No more calling and threatening. It's just I will continue to tell stories. I want I have no interest in me tooing anyone. Nobody did anything wrong. I but don't care know, if anyone he... hits on me. I really don't even care if anyone hits on me. That wasn't the point. I was making a point anonymously. If I wanted the clicks for it and the drama, I would have said the person's name. I still am not saying their name. Um because this was not my intention at all. But I am allowed to tell a story that's interesting right. to me and I think is like relatable and- To any woman in a workplace. Yes. Well and I just want to interject there and quickly say, I said already categorically that I don't understand this narrative, narrative that some people have been trying to paint. Some of the Brendan Shaw fans and some of the people who don't like Kalila and think she's some sort of um, gold digging whore or something, right? The narrative they've been trying to spin is that Number one, Kalila shouldn't have mentioned what she mentioned about Brenda signing into her DMs because it was seven years ago. And number two, Annie shouldn't have mentioned it if she's not going to put a name on it. Just insinuating if it made more damage and stuff. And why are you doing that? He's a married man. You're just going to cause trouble at home. My thing was, as a dude, I think you have to be aware that if you try and throw a shot at somebody, right? You're allowed to throw your shot. You're allowed to slide in DMs. You're allowed to try and pursue people, especially if you're interested in them and, you know, whatever, consenting adults, cool. But if you miss that person, you've kind of, in, you're kind of, agree, you're kind of in some weird, you've agreed to some weird relationship thing in that kind of courtship. And if you swing in the miss and something goes terrible, that is part of their story now. It's not just yours because two people are involved. You spoke to them. They replied. They may have said yes. They may have said no. But whatever happens after the fact, it's now, your, it's now a story that each person can share if they want to. But it's not something that you get ownership of to say, no, you can't share it because this might embarrass me because I've got a girlfriend. I've got a wife. Well, you should have thought by that before you sit into their DMs. That's why, you know, it's high risk, high reward. No one's no one's condoning all these things, but people do it. People cheat. People, you know, go and do what they want to do on the outside and pretend they're flipping, going to the office, or they're working late, or they're out with their mates, whatever it may be. Cool. But if you play these games, you might end up getting burnt. But then when you get burnt, you can't then turn back and say, you shouldn't have told them. You should have kept it a secret. No, they don't owe you shit. They don't owe you shit. It's their story as much as it is yours. This, exactly, especially for podcasters too. You run, you you know, the stories that you have are pretty, you know, you only have a few good ones. You're running low. You might want to pull out one. It might be embarrassing to somebody, but it is what it is. I was there too. I'm allowed to tell it. So I never understand that whole narrative, but you know, it is what it is. Well, well here's what even, I'll say not that, about but any this. guy or girl. And it's, it's like, if you're not, if, if it's not true and you didn't read the comments, <laughs> how would you know? that it's you and why did you say but it's you what what do you guys have to say about the fact sorry about that, that michael's on like, sorry, sorry sorry the way sorry. i saw him and the way that like he comes off to me he seems just genuinely broken by the internet like this is somebody who is really like apparent like i i don't want to put no, out like I, I don't buy it either because we no. all get shit kalila you know what that is bless kalila bless her because because uh, I think she genuinely feels bad because that Brendan Shaw Tiger Belly episode was such a car crash 
Because I think, again, I didn't expect him to apologise, but I think reasonable people did. Kalala did. She's a reasonable person. Reasonable people thought he's getting so destroyed online that she's probably going to just be like, you know what? Um, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> Marty Moose. <laughs> Esther's the Leah's type. She looks 12. Yo, you guys are going crazy on this <laughs> show. <laughs> in case Susan's watching from YouTube, I do not condone anything that's going on in the chat. These people are their own people. They're free to do and say what they want. I'm talking on the stream. Don't 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 punish me for their words. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Holy shit. Anyway, let's continue. Let me continue. let me let me gather myself. What was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? Um, can I go to go? Oh, yeah. You know what's amazing, yeah? You know what's amazing? I was going to say, um, yeah, so I was saying, bless Kalila for having sympathy for Brendan. I get it. She was in front of him. She saw how sad he looked, how broken he was. And I think in general, his gaslighting and manipulation in person probably worked on her to the point where she feels sorry for him now because she thinks you know he's obviously a redact he obviously doesn't get it he's obviously a little bit emotionally stunted maybe a little bit immature and she just feels bad for him she just wants it to end but obviously these girls weren't in the room with him so they don't have any any qualms and just saying no it's bullshit he's trying to spin a narrative he's trying to play victim do you know what i mean that's what they're all saying and i definitely agree with that 100 100 agree with that so let's go I Literally, know, I read the comments. You from guys, our last he has episode. bomb threats at his shows. Bomb threat? Do you think they're gonna bomb? I have to have. I have lists of men that aren't allowed at my show because they threaten to kill me all the time. Do you also, understand? like people. This is what think, goes with the show. People who think that, like, oh, we got we got one over on everybody because we told this story. We're now being harassed. Everything I post online, I'm harassed about yeah. these, like, walk me to my truck. And why they wouldn't want to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I know that, by the way, if those people that we're talking about watch this show, nothing I say will be heard because I'm ugly to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It, here's what I do. Is that a common thing? I don't watch this show. I don't know these girls too well. But is that a common thing that everyone says Esther's ugly? Is that a thing? You guys say she's ugly. Men on the internet are flipping hilarious, isn't it? You say Esther's ugly, but some, the guys that say Esther's ugly are the same ones. If you saw their exes, none of them would be better looking than her anyway. So it's like, and also, would you have a chance at her anyway, even if she wasn't ugly? Probably not. You know, like, it's, it's very, very, very interesting that people say these kind of things. Um, but hey, but also, you know what? Give them credit. For a woman to get on a podcast and, be subject herself to that kind of abuse and not cry and crumble and these people aren't suing anyone right they're not i wouldn't are they blocking people aggressively do they not listen to the comments or not they don't read list you know read feedback and whatnot they seem pretty reasonable from what i know of them on the clips and stuff so they're way more capable of you know enduring some of the trolly nature of the internet and just kind of you know rolling with the punches than a flipping six foot five 200 pound former ufc heavyweight that says a lot in it. That says a lot. I do. I will say, you know, if my dog was behaving badly, um, I can see how someone would call me and be like, get your dog in line. Right. But you're not a dog. Yeah. I <laughs> have said since the beginning, anyone talking to me about this offline, I never said this person's name. I'm never going to say their name. I was that was never my intention. Right he can call me i said that over and over again he can call me but instead it had to be this whole thing behind the scenes I, bullying and behind the shit. scenes i did tell him that i mean i think your best move here is to call in but i'm just gonna say this i'm taking the truck out of auto park i'm putting it in neutral i'm letting it slide down the hill i'm done talking about it it's but, all good but listen guys if we zoom out mm -hmm. a little bit it's funny isn't it that just common sense just like again this could this all been avoided? Yes, because it was just a silly conversation between some silly girls having a silly time. They were talking about trash guys on their show that's called Trash Tuesdays, and it came up or Trash Tuesday or Tuesdays, you know, it came up something about men, and they wanted to share some experiences that they had, and it happened to coincide with them two sharing a you know the same person who they kind of were approached by. It is what it is. You swung, you missed. Say la vie. 
say la vie. It's not that big of a deal. Just apologize and move on. For some reason, he turned it into this whole big hoopla nonsense stuff. And it mostly is to do with the way he reacted to it. That's the reason you're there. We are where we are now. And it's just mad to think that a grown up, a man with children, a man who pays taxes, a man who has a house, a man who has a wife is incapable of just like, hey, I messed up, man. Hands up. My bad, man. I really do apologize profusely. Um, it won't happen again. This is a real big, you know, fuck up on my side of things. You know, whatever. Just, just something sincere, sincere sounding. And then just go from there. Nah, it's just turned into this whole, you know, weird defense victim thing. Bizarre. On everything. On our lives. Like, this is a joke. This doesn't matter. Yeah, it's an anonymous no. anecdote. It's it still does always just not nothing. matter. Yeah. Like, and what I find interesting in all of this is that, you know, the players involved, the little game of telephone that has been, the people involved outside of the three of us, the people in between who are, they're all having, this is high entertainment for them, <laughs> including our friends and colleagues who are like, what's happening? Oh no, but he said this. All of them think this is a dumpster fire they cannot peel their eyes away from. So we have to see it as, you know, for me, it's felt like a lose-lose. Only because it's like, like, everyone's just laughing at this whole spectacle. It turned into... Seems like a win to me. That's what I go for is laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> I just, you tell jokes. It's... But it's like, it was, you know, and that's what I tried to convey to him. Like, as honestly as I could, it's like, Brendan, this was something so small on January 25th. There was, we had a giggly little girl talk on January 26th. A phone call could have been made to say, that hurt my feelings. Can you guys not do that anymore? Instead, now there's federal, possibly federal <laughs> crimes. So to me, that's an absurdity that I cannot wrap my head around. And I'd like to officially say I am exiting this me too. I'm fucking out. circus. Yeah. I oh, wow. Actual, wow. I'm surprised, actually. I'm surprised, but I get it. It's a, it, it is a circus and they're not going to get anywhere. If they want an apology, it's not going to happen. If they want recognition of, you know, ill intent, it's not going to happen. If they want some resolution, maturity, whatever, shaking of the hand, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's not going to happen. He's created this whole fucking Reddit conspiracy going on at the moment. But yeah, big up the super chat from MTF for $2.99. I appreciate you. There's no comment or anything on the actual super chat itself. So thank you itself for just swinging across $2.99. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, whoever you are, for that $2.99. I think that you know, we, we work in this field of people, most of them in our, our clowns in Arrested Development. And, and maybe that's me too. All but of us. this clown is leaving the fucking circus. I'm out. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm out. It's not worth it, you guys. We have her. a great show. You know, we got it, it. We didn't mean to hurt anyone. Then we were told we were intentionally hurting someone. When and, we never, there's... Right. It, it, oh, brilliant point here by Jesse G. Well, if you listen to tt trash tuesday you'll realize it's all just women talk that's what they do it's what women do they gossip exactly imagine getting imagine nearly destroying your whole entire company because some girls decided to just talk about your terrible pickup lines or something it's not that big of a deal it's embarrassing especially if you've got a wife yeah cool it could end your marriage yeah cool you could lose your kids yeah cool lose your home yeah cool <laughs> yeah, i know all those things could happen but still you did it it is what it is, isn't it? Just accept what happened and try and fix it. I don't know. I don't understand how you've made it into all this big thing, but hey, it is what it is. It's done. It's done. And people's personal lives are not our business. I don't we care. Don't, we, I don't, don't keep give a saying shit. That. Do. We don't care. You guys do what you do. It's been, I mean, it went to the top. Let's just say that. <laughs> this whole situation, An this small little podcast operation, one minute of little girl talk, you know, it just went all I'm the way to the... Girl, bitch. And when she says top, you know what she means? She means Joe Rogan, which is the most hilarious revelation from this whole thing as well. All of those conspiracy theories that have been on the Fire and the Kids subreddit about Brendan running to Daddy Rogan and other comedians running to Daddy Rogan to complain about some New York comic making fun of them or whatever that people have been saying that was kind of far-fetched has now been proven to be correct. Brendan does ring up Rogan and snitch 
you know, to him about people that he feels like are being mean to him or put him on notice about a certain person that said this and whatnot. Like, imagine the amount of, this is a bit of a stretch and maybe I'm being a little bit, you know, dramatic, but imagine the careers that have been ruined and derailed because the person didn't say the nice thing to Brendan and Brian or they didn't, you know, acknowledge him at the store or something silly like that. Just imagine the amount of careers that have been destroyed because they weren't cool or because they weren't in with that group. Just imagine. Or because of little tiny things that don't really, really matter in the grand scheme of things. Really crazy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I was doing big girl talk. Oh, Kyle, she's right here. Oh my God, that's so mean. She's the little goal. As Brendan Shaw would say, it's water under the rug. <laughs> Oh, Andy's fucking hilarious. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's wall under the rock. Oh. <laughs> Lady's fucking silly, but let's continue. Is there anything more? Then Brendan, it's your move. Well, well just we're done. Come, the, come to the show. Come hang out with us. Yeah. yeah. So I also wanted to clarify for the audience that watched the Tiger Belly episode that Shab oh, yeah. said that he had like 300 pages of evidence against us, but then I, it was never shown to us or our production team, even though I had continued to ask for it, right? Um, but at the end of the show, he was like, I will show you after the show. But I'm like, well, my audience is not going to know what we've seen. Um, so I'm putting this information on Trash Tuesday instead. What we saw was a very zoomed in photo of HTML codes, um, numbers, no context on a paper. And you know when you encircle um, something on your phone with red, it just said the company's email. And then he showed me another page, all HTML code, no context, (laughs) completely zoomed in. And it said Robert Lee, which is not even Bobby's like, government name um and that Isn't was that the a only- president <laughs> yeah. no 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 i can't believe this man i really can't believe this this can't be true this can't be true no way did brendan Shaw. all this evidence he's been talking about this 300 pages the whole reason why he's now pursuing legal charges and suing YouTubers and, you know, threatening to take down subreddits, allegedly, all this stuff is because someone did this. Is that what you're telling me? Someone did this, the equivalent of this. They did that, right click, they did inspect, right? It's going to come up now, is it coming up? Come on. That is the evidence that he's, he was given. He gave to Flippin' Mijigi, to what's her name? To uh, to Kalila. That's the evidence. This stuff is coming up now in a minute. Hopefully it loads. Come on. My computer's been slow. Are you going to load? Yeah, this is the evidence that he gave. This stuff is evidence. Are you having a laugh? That is evidence. Are you kidding me? All of this is because... <laughs> and somehow in the process, he found an email in there that said Robert Lee. No way. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. This can't be true. No way this is true. No way. No way this is true. Or did he do this? Or or is this the evidence? This is the other way. That can't that could be evidence. If it's HTML, right? And it was zoomed in. Maybe he did this. Let's go on a new tab so it doesn't break my computer. Maybe he did this. Maybe he did that. He did right click. Right? And he did view page source. You're telling me this is the evidence. This, this stuff is the fucking evidence. Is that what we're telling each other? All of this for that. Holy flipping smokes. Do we think, do we think, do we think, do we think this is a possibility? Hear this out, hear this, hear this one out. This just came to me now. Do you remember the story about Brendan trying to get some cats? He was trying to get some cats. I guess maybe his family wanted some cats and he's allergic to them. And he tried to get some, I forgot what the what the name is for cats that, are, that don't make you sneeze. But whatever the term is, he wanted to get some from a breeder. Now, there's conflicting stories out there that you can't actually get these cats, that they don't actually exist. I'm not sure if that's true 
or if you know whatever happens but you know there is some conjecture out there in the cat community of how easy it is to get cats that don't make you have some sort of allergic reaction he then gets swindled by a breeder who says they've got the cats but they don't have them but then in order to get the cats bred he had to pay up front a certain amount two thousand five thousand i don't know how much it was it was a it was it was a thousand amount right some something in the thousands and of course the person never had the cats and ran away with the money and it's a classic sort of like game people play all the time with cats because i guess there's not a lot of information out there about it and people just get swindled do we do we think this is my theory now is it possible that brendan Shaw somehow got swindled by somebody pretending to be a cyber security expert somebody that's kind of you know professed to be sorry professed to be an expert in trolls and hate groups and hate and all that sort of stuff that he, you know that makes him visibly angry maybe he got swindled by somebody who said that they can get to the bottom of it and all they did was go on bloody reddit right and click right click flipping view inspect element imagine if that happened so maybe he's not lying maybe he actually believes that that was the that what he saw was real because he doesn't understand computers too well. So, and again, look at the hear the hear the flipping hear the hear the lunacy of it. Hold on, what's what's someone saying in the chat to me? Um, um, Marty saying uh, the same thing happened to Mike Pillow guy with his fake digital vote evidence. I don't know about that. Oh yeah, true, Mike Pillow guy. Great point, Marty. Great bloody point. Because again, just before I lose my my train of thought. Don't you think it's hilarious how somebody, again, this is only my theory. I don't know if it's true because I generally think he generally believes what evidence he's got. Wouldn't it be hilarious one person accusing another person of being the mastermind behind an entire subreddit community, but then that same person is also somebody who gets duped into believing that a whole 300 page worth of flipping HTML code is somehow evidence that someone is behind the flipping hate group that he's hating or the hate group that is always attacking him. How does that make any sense? You don't, you don't even understand HTML and you're accusing somebody of starting an entire subreddit and setting up sock accounts to target, you know, to harass you for a prolonged period of time. Come on. That could be possibly... I can't... I can't believe that's what he gave her. Zoomed in documents. No. No. Come on, Brendan. Robert Ely. It was Robert Ely. General, general. Oh, like a General Ely. Yeah. That's so. Um, I can't believe he had government officials coming after him on Reddit. <laughs> so I That's know that. So fucked up. I was supposed to update the. Uh, we were supposed to update the audience on Tiger Belly, but we forgot. Um, but those are two you know things I, that I. You know why she forgot, by the way, because it was bullshit. You know when you're talking to somebody, this kind of I'm, I've been in this position before, where you're talking to somebody who just doesn't listen. And then sometimes they just keep talking. You just forget what they say because it's so exhausting. So at this point, there was no more RAM in her brain to process the nonsense that he was coming out with. So she just forgot about it. Even though it's a really big part of the story, it's going to be one of the main kind of punctuation points or maybe a kind of part two to this, part seven, part eight to this whole entire thing. And she conveniently forgot about it because it was so dumb. <laughs> it wasn't worth even trying to remember to relay it back to the audience like why would i tell you that he showed me a zoomed in image of html code and circled robert lee <laughs> brendan Shaw, man and this all could have been avoided if you just would have said sorry hands up i know i did that thing i apologize i feel embarrassed can we be friends and it would have been over my man zooming into HTML code and circling it with these flipping, you know, on the iPhone, you have that markup feature. He's circling it with his markup feature. <laughs> Holy shit. I saw and I was like, Brendan, this is a joke. This is a Mickey Mouse. Like someone could have just sent you this my mom could have just photoshopped this um so maybe it was your mom i'm giving him i'm giving him <laughs> the benefit it, it probably was <laughs> i'm giving him the benefit of the doubt however and um... <laughs> it brendan was to fuck a mom imagine that that would be hilarious <laughs> i am 
his team is now working with um, my production because to me, when I saw it, I was like, I, I like with all due respect, Brendan, but this cannot be real. Like this is a joke. And he was like, well, so we're still working. And don't be mean about it because we did make a no, a no mean. I was not shown anything uh, uh, substantial or anything that would even match his accusation towards our company. So that's what I want to say out there. That's the truth. That's a, that is the truth I wanted to put out. As but credit to him though, man. Credit to Brendan in some redacted way. Imagine being, imagine having your back against the wall, right? Enemies coming at you from all different directions. You're not too sure who's your friend or your foe. All these comedians, especially the male ones who had no courage and no balls to call you out on your bullshit before when Joe Rogan was around, are now getting brave to say something because three ladies stood up for themselves. Your, all the haters are coming around there. Your wife is maybe threatening to leave you. You don't want her to take all half your stuff. You just bought a Ferrari. You started a new company. You're, you're not too sure where to go. You're not too sure if it's a special, people are going to like it. And then you think, how can I get out of this without admitting fault? Aha, uh -huh. Bobby Lee started the fire in the kids' subreddit. <laughs> That's how you get out of it, mate. Your back's against the wall. You've got no one to help you. Rogan's in Austin. Brian Callen's still dealing with the aftermath of several rape charges or allegations or whatever accusations. Crystal Lee is, you know, suppressing his desire to go in, you know, um, <laughs> to to go in flipping um, gate crash a flipping, you know, student graduation party or something. <laughs> Fear Vaughan doesn't want to be anywhere near you. You're on your own. You have to figure this out. You're on your own. You have expensive taste. You like expensive things. You need to make sure that you don't get cancelled because if you do, you're not too sure how you're going to come back. And you're like, you know what? No, 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 no. We're not losing this. We're not losing this. We're not losing. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to accuse the whole Tiger Belly staff of a coordinated attack against my life and against my career. And I'm also going to suggest and throw in there this whole little nugget he threw in there with Uniques. Like, here you go. Here's a little nugget in there. Oh, yeah, I saw this guy on YouTube abusing somebody on camera, clickbait stuff and suing him, copyright. Like, absolute genius, the distraction, isn't it? What an impressive distraction. Most sensible people just admit and just put their hands up and say, I'm sorry. He said, nah, I'm not losing. I'm not going out like that. I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> someone who knows that bobby doesn't know how to buy a computer i that's checks out for me bobby doesn't know how to check his email like he doesn't know how to even log on to his email he i i don't think he can text barely like, <laughs> barely he better not be able to <laughs> know me a few okay let's jump <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that was it. Big up the ladies. That was very entertaining. Um, what's the conclusion we got from this? Nothing really, in it. The evidence was the main thing. We didn't get it. Instead, we got HTML source code. Um, the admission of guilt was also not there because he didn't really apologize. Honestly, listen back to that Tiger Belly show with Brendan. Just listen to it and hear if he actually apologizes. Not for what happened, but for what set off the entire thing, which is obviously creepy to the DM. Sorry about that, right? So obviously that, that didn't happen. Um, nothing happened, really. If anything, it probably made things worse because now I'd imagine the Tiger Belly crew guys don't know if people in the scene actually like them. The whole reporting it back to Rogan was probably a big thing that really you know worried them and worried Bobby with his career, blah, 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 blah. blah. All those things um, <laughs> really affected it. But in the end, no one really won. Everyone lost in this case. We lost brain cells. They probably lost a lot of time. It is what it is. What are you guys saying in the chat? <laughs>